Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ingus and I'm from MyJS Electronics and today we're going to be finishing off uh, Schneider Electric ATV320 drive where we're going to set our drive to run a remote mode using a uh, multi-frequency setup and we're going to be using an MOP or in their manual called plus minus speed control where we're going to be using two buttons to uh, raise the speed and lower the speed. So if you haven't seen the last two videos there where we uh, set up the drive, get commissioned the drive and run in local mode, that will be semi-local mode, that will be in the description below and also the one we did with the uh, yeah, remote control with 2 y control, 3 y control and also we used the AP tachometer as well. Ladies and gentlemen, all the parts and all the manuals and uh, all other related stuff that I think is, uh, will, is something to do with this video is going to be all the links in the description below and before we get started don't forget that every single part that we're using in these videos you are they are more or less available on my website at ijselectronic.co.uk so without further ado let's get started <music> Alrighty, the wiring is done and the for the first application we're going to be using is in uh, a manual is called plus minus speed and the station pretty much is going to look like that we're exploring a bit more again with the Schneider Electric product as you can see down there we go forward run reverse run a speed up and speed down I like these switches we'll show you that in a minute how that works but these are all manufactured by Schneider Electric and it will be available online as well except the legend plate is done uh, differently um, for the speed up and speed down oh boys there is some challenge to get across on how to get this thing going and I shall show you step by step guide how to get to that uh, point the first things what we need to do we need to assign the inputs for uh, first choose your macro any macro will do, but if choose the macro where you can have, you don't have to mess around and uh, de-assign uh, the, the inputs and what they do. So I chose the uh, start-stop macro, as you can see down here, uh, L1, L2 is used uh, for, the, for the, the, don't use the, yeah, and I haven't tried on a 3 wire control, but you can almost definitely try it, but this all setup is going to be 2 wire control. As you can see down there, L3, L4, L5 and L6. I run assign, so I just chose that macro to be able to assign the inputs for it. And what you need to do is now that you know that which inputs are uh, free, and I have as you can see wiring down there, I've used uh, for start stop, reverse, and, uh, and it will be a sorry, reverse uh, forward run, reverse run, and uh, speed up and speed down for DI3 and DI4. And to assign it, so you need to go to the functions. As always, all assignments can be done in functions. So uh, full, go all the way to fun, functions. And then you need to go to the parameter called UDP. It will look just like that. And in there, click on that when you, I think that that's for the up. So as you can see down there, I have assigned L13. And that's for the down. This is where I sign L14. And the next one in here, which is STR, in there you can sort of specify how you want the ref reference to be uh, dealt with once you change it. Uh, one of them is the RAM, which is this one. RAM, which means it will save the uh, speed in uh, RAM. So pretty much, uh, so all the speed changes are gonna be done. It will save it, or if it stays on no, so the, the no uh, frequency will be saved. So uh, it's up to you how you want. If you want every time you stop the drive, the, the system to go back to zero, do it. And But if you want the speed to stay, stay where it was in a uh, previous uh, uh, change, just change it to, to the RAM, which is the internal RAM. So we're gonna choose that. Here we go. The next one, what we need to do, we need to assign the reference point, which is, this is where the, where my head completely blew, because of course, neither had to make things very, very complicated. At least for me it is. Let me know in the comments below if you find their manual very really complicated. But it is, once you get your head around, it's fine. It's just getting the head around, jeez. It's got some work to do. So the first one we need to do, we need to uh, go to the page 155 is in here as you can see page 155 and the first one you're going to need to do we need to do, do this uh, go to the switching frequency 
it says RFC. We need to change that to read reference to channel 2. Channel 2, I presume that's where he reads the frequent frequency uh, from a digital input. So that's the first thing what we need to do. So we go to full and then we go to CTL. CTL and then we go all the way down to RFC. That's what is. RFC and as you can see down there it uh, by default is an RF1 you change that to RF2 so we read the inf information from RF2 and the next one you need to do you need to select where, what to read from so in here as you can see down here there is a plus minus speed command that's what we need to uh, select that one which I have done already that's right under that in RF2 commands and that's what you need to select to be able to for the whole system to run and that's pretty much it and another thing is when you if you is your buttons uh, which i'm going to show you in a minute how that uh, frequency uh, response how sensitive your buttons are are determined by frequency one and frequency two and let me show you how that buttons are everything all the wiring is done in here so can you be see so here we go the buttoning is again number one 24 signal comes to the east e stop and then it just follows to all the buttons and then they go back to the designated uh, ios which is uh, forward it will be io1 uh, reverse io2 speed up io3 and speed down io4 obviously you still have io5 and io6 which is di6 and di6 and then you can still add you can program buttons into it, you can have a reset onto it, you can have a jog onto it. There are so many things you can add to it, because the, the smarter the drives goes, the, the, the more functions are, are and uh, cap capabilities they have. So this guy's got six digital inputs, which is very generous, so you can play around. I just wish the manual would be much more easier, but it really is, uh, but like I said, it's, it's not bad, it's just, just need to get your head around it, that's, a, that's about it. So let me put the cover on and I'll show you how that works. Okay, cover is on. Now before we get started guys, if you are getting one of these stations and by any chance the buttons are not hitting when you click them on, the buttons are not sort of like uh, turning things on, it's because of, uh, my, the, the, if you're using this type of legend plates, you could take fairly thick uh, legend plates in here. So uh, there's a rubber in here. Take that rubber out away from the button if you are in a dry environment, and that will that will say, give a sort of compensate for the loss they have because of the legend plate in here. Every, I mean, yeah, there's other way you can do it. You, you can there's a special spanner from the from the bar other side when you put a uh, nut on it. You can use that one to really tighten up properly, and that will solve as well. But what I did, I just removed the little rubbers in here, so that gives me this extra one two millimeter to hit the buttons properly. So how that works? I put it in a run mode. As you can see, it ramps up quite slowly. As I said, your frequency upwards will very much, as you can see, I qu quickly stopped it. Then it stays on the zero. You know? And then, as you can see, when I, when I half, it takes me a while, see, it goes up quite slowly. So I'm holding a button. It takes me quite slowly to go, but look how fast it takes me to go down because my deacceleration is in one second. So that will be very much determined how sensitive these buttons are will very much will be determined how you set up your uh, acceleration acceleration times and obviously then is your uh, reverse button will do exactly the same and if you try to uh, click the uh, two both buttons together the one is on already it will take the priority so uh, bear that in mind and uh, that will be it when we go for plus minus speed control of different manufacturers call it different is mop electronic wave control net and this guy is going to be called plus minus frequency control and also that's going to be in the title i think as well so having done that i think that's enough so uh next thing let's jump on to multi-frequency all right the multi-frequency station is wired up and it's going to look uh like that run uh, speed one two and three but we're going to be able to achieve a lot more speed speeds than that. Uh, first things what we need to do, we need to change back a couple of things that we just changed for a jog, which is a normal, uh, normal uh, not for jog, sorry, for plus minus speed control. Uh, for that we need to change back, but if you go in a straight in the macro and not, not haven't done anything what we did before, just basically you need to make sure that you're in a reference uh, RFC, you make sure you're in a reference channel 1, 
and uh, that's pretty much it and then all you need to do after that is assi uh, assign your uh, inputs and if you look at the page 181 you need to sort of assign uh, inputs where they are going to be as you can see that uh, PS2 you are you assigned to I assigned to L3 uh, PS4 which means four preset speed uh, L4 uh, uh, and uh, PS5 I assigned to L5 uh, but as you can see then that what that means is two speeds four speeds eight speed you can get up to 16 speeds if you assign something else to a di6 which is l6 so and uh, once you've done that uh, i'll show you where that is if you go for a uh, full again from configuration to full enter the full and go all the way down to functions as usual this is where you change everything everything is changeable in functions and then go down to s what's it called pss this guy in here and then as you can see down here uh, I already have selected it. My the first thing is so my uh, uh, PS2 is on three, PS4 is on four, and PS8 is on my five. And after that, you've got this uh, PS16, and thereon you can start adding uh, editing, starting from PS2 all the way to PS16. I think, uh, you can edit what frequencies uh, you want. Let me see. Here we go. And that goes. Oh no, that goes only to, to eight. And how do you get to? Oh yeah, because I only I only have selected eight uh, frequencies, so uh, it will only go to eight. If you select it to uh, sixteen frequencies, it will go all the way to sixteen. Uh, so I forgot that part. Uh, and that's pretty much once you selected that is it. And the first frequency that it's classed as a first frequency is what it's set in your minimum frequency setting, which is uh, in. Let me just go out. Uh, full settings and you go down all the way to LSB this would be uh, this is where you would set your first frequency I that uh, like uh, having a uh, run button that would enable uh, my uh, run pretty much and uh, I'll show and demonstrate that uh, in a minute because to start any any uh, frequency you can't just select speed one you need that it needs to have a run signal which is the first frequency which is which is the first which i'm going to actually show you the uh, and uh, the switches now so as you, as you, you can see in here as usual i got my east off east of powers up all the switches and my first one in here that the digital input that comes by go i class my run run button but in theory it's your first speed it's the one that is required to activate all the other ones. So this guy needs to be in for these guys to uh, switch switch to the frequencies. I left that frequency to zero as my command. So if I want some sort of combination of the switches, let's say I want this frequency and that frequency and whatever I set in that number. And that number uh, you can see in in a little graph that Snyder Electric has done in the page 180 uh, manual. As you can see down there, it tells you what each term or each input needs to be closed to achieve that sort of speed. It's quite straightforward, fairly easy. And by doing so, you need to run and you need to, uh, whatever the speed you're going to have, uh, going to select. So I'm going to demonstrate that in a minute. So let me put the cover on. I'll show that how that works. Okay, the cover is on. Whatever reason, I'm still in position. The one thing I want to change is my deacceleration, which we're going to do that. No, acceleration, sorry. In settings, let's go all the way to acceleration. Change that to one. Because ac this acceleration will determine each speed, uh, sorry, uh, each speed that will uh, be going up at this acceleration. So save that. Here we go. So, how this works now at the moment, if, so for idea, remember, this would be your first, uh, this would be your first uh, signal, but this is the signal you need to get these guys going. So at the moment in the station, we can see only three speeds. If you can see, if I put run, in the theory, if I set that minimum uh, speed to something, uh, it will run that frequency, which I don't want. I want to have a, so uh, I want to have a button that I would enable the, the run and it will just pretty much go for this uh, selection of the speed I have preset to go so as you can see now I can click uh, number speed number one it will be speed number one 
And for that one, it's going to be my speed number two, or whichever number is in the uh, selection down there by the input. And let's close that will be my speed number three. So let's say, uh, as you can see, when I, when I remove that, the, the system will stop because it requires this run signal, which happens from digital input one. So uh, again, as you can see, it goes 24. So if I want, because uh, you can see, I, I can get more speeds out of it by doing more selections. So let's say speed one and speed three, let's say you would write that down somewhere else, but to give you some different speed. As you can see now, I can, uh, it goes to 30 rather than having this going like that and then you're just trying to switch and get to where you want to get you have this uh, run button to help uh, to uh, stop the machine then you select the switches and then you kick on to whatever frequency you want to go at the moment I can set I can make up eight speeds out of this well seven because I'm not using this speed so eight, uh, eight is seven speeds plus the run uh, signal down there and that's how pretty much that works and now I think I'm not sure I showed this uh, the uh, the signal so my run uh, button is coming to digital input one and then I program I left the digital input two because that's pre-programmed pre to go uh, reverse you can add another switch to go in reverse as well so I didn't bother to uh, removing that so I then I program in my digital input to uh, three four and five to correspond to one two and three and that way you are getting your multi frequency and you are well on your way having a uh, speed that you want to be correct at all times. So that, ladies and gentlemen, will cover this drive. I know there is ton more this drive can do. It is absolutely amazing drive. It is, it is quite tough at the beginning to get your head around it, but once you do, it is really good drive. Very well manufactured and it's got functions that uh, things you can do with it is beyond there is there's many many applications that can be used for all the way it's, it's got additions as you can see down there. there's a plug down there you can add additions for can for mobiles for ethernet and all sorts of bits you can do with it so uh but for general use these three video hopefully has covered most of it and hopefully you got the full gist of it how the menu works so other than that ladies and gentlemen if you like the video please dash splash that like subscribe and uh, comment below what you like what you don't like and of course Comment below what you what else do you want to see out of these uh, videos that I am missing out that uh, you would like to see. So other than that, thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video.